I used to think that structural engineering was hard until I learned these five things. These exact learnings are what helped me to go from a clueless university student to delivering over 30 successful projects in the last 12 months and in this video I want to share how you can make the same transformation. I want to share how you can become more confident in your designs, how you can stop feeling like an imposter and also give you some tips so you can avoid a bunch of mistakes along the way. Alright now the first big learning that I have is that you have to start with the layout. As a student whenever you have to do an assignment or even just a home homework question. Usually everything you need to find minus the one thing you have to find yourself is given to you. For example, if you've been asked to find the capacity of a reinforced concrete beam, you'll have everything that you need to know about this concrete beam. You'll be given the reinforcement layout, the concrete grade, and even the design actions. Now this oversimplification is good for learning individual tasks, but in reality we're not given all this information, we've got to create it. So this old habit of just jumping straight into analysis mode is something that we've got to get rid of. Instead, the first thing that you should be doing is planning the overall layout and seeing how things are going to fit together. For example, for a floor framing plan in a house, this would be laying out the direction and spans for all your floor joists and bearers, and in a roof framing plan for a steel warehouse, this would be laying out your rafter and column locations, as well as your struts and bracing. Once you've done this, you've basically done the bulk of the work, and from here, this is where you can jump into analysis mode and start crunching the numbers, and make sure that your layout checks out. Now, when you first start out, you might need help help from your seniors to get these layouts correct, but what I really would encourage you to do is try to understand why they have laid out things the way they have, because once you can do this yourself, this is where things really begin to flow, and a lot more fun can be had within structural engineering. Alright, and number two is that the perfect design doesn't exist. Now I'm definitely not saying that anything goes, because that's definitely not true, but what I am saying is that besides the general rules of thumb that all engineers seem to follow, there's no one way of doing things. For example, if you give the same project to five different engineers, I can guarantee you that you're going to get five different designs. But the thing is, this isn't even a bad thing. Sure, some designs would be a bit more efficient than others and save a bit more money here and there, but realistically, as long as all the designs are safe, the builder is on board with what you've done, and the client is happy, all is okay. As a young engineer, it's really easy to get caught up in the design stage, trying to make your designs as efficient as possible, because at uni, this is what we're taught to do. But realistically, you don't need to go and squeeze every last decimal point out of your design. As long as they work and they're easy to build, everyone's going to be happy. Okay, and next is you need a knowledge bank. As a structural engineer, and especially as a young structural engineer, you'll rarely have an established niche, and because of this, you have to become a jack of all trades. What this means is that because you're working across a lot of different areas, it might be a few weeks or maybe even a few months between doing a certain type of design, and when this happens, your knowledge bank is going to be your saviour. In your knowledge bank, you will need information from all areas of structural engineering, and this is something that you will build up over time as you do more designs and just get more experience. But just so you know, every time you do a different type of design or work with a different material, you should keep a copy of all the resources that you used, any calculations that you wrote, or any spreadsheets that you made. Any type of material that makes things easier and reduces the overall time you have to spend relearning things is a big key to becoming a better engineer. Okay, and number four is you need systems. What I mean by this is that completing one project on your own is good, but being able to consistently do it one after another is the real goal. And the only way that you're going to be able to efficiently do this is by having systems. For example, every set of drawings roughly follows the same sort of layout, and because of this you can set up a template which has a lot of the info that you're going to need on them already there ready to go. Likewise, if you can create a library of standard details that are all grouped together and categorized, very easily you can copy over completed details that again are ready to go. And these sorts of systems don't just apply to getting the drawing set up, they can apply to the design process too. For instance, in many software programs you can set up a template file that already already has load cases and load combinations inputted, so every time you start up a new file you can start with this as a base and save yourself time from doing those tedious setup tasks. Personally I've found that creating systems like this that allow you to streamline the design and documentation process is super important as a structural engineer, and looking back at the last year this is one of the main changes that I've made and I can say that it's really paid off a lot. Alright, and number 5 is you have to keep studying. 
I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. Studying doesn't stop when you graduate. Guys, as a graduate, you're basically starting from nothing. This might seem weird to hear because you're covering so much at uni, but when you start working, you'll see what I mean. Believe me, on your first day of work, you'll be given a really simple task and you won't even know where to start. This might come as a shock to some of you, but it really is the truth. We all have to start somewhere and those first couple of years out of uni is where we have the most to learn. So alongside the stuff that you're learning at work, you need to be reaffirming and consolidating this stuff through doing things like creating your own notes, reading this stuff in textbooks, and also creating your own practice models and software programs. Doing all these sorts of things will have a massive effect on your development, and for me, it's been one of the biggest confidence boosters. Making the transformation from a graduate who has no idea what they're talking about to someone who can hold their own and be an asset on the team takes a lot of work, and studying is a sure way to get there. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did enjoy it, you might like this video here where I share some habits that I've been using to become a better engineer, or that video there where I share some strategic moves that you can be using to get ahead of your engineering classmates. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.